Hi. Well, it's been a long time since we've been together, but of course, since you see these consecutively, for you, that's not the case. We were talking, we we're talking from Ohel Rachel, as you know, and today we're going to begin talking about the mitzvah of Hafashat Chala, taking out Chala. So, um, let's go right to it. The mitzvah of Chala, he Hafashala Gavoa, Shosei Isha Betoch Miskeret Avodata Beveta. He begins by telling us, that separating chala from the dough is a way in which the woman takes something of what's within her home and dedicates it to Hashem in the midst of her home, in the midst of her work. So he compares the mitzvah of taking challah from dough to the mitzvah of taking maser, taking tithes from the produce of the fields. What does it mean to take tithes? And what does it mean to take challah? Let's go through the technical part first. What taking challah involves is as follows. If a woman is making a dough using the five species of grain, and she mixes that dough together with the liquid to turn it into something, the, not the dough. The flour is mixed with liquid, it turns into dough. Okay, so this dough requires challah. What does challah mean? It means taking a piece off and rendering the rest of it chulin, making the rest of it permitted to secular use, to ordinary use. In earlier times, the piece she would take off would be dedicated to Hashem via the Kohanim, who stood as his, repu- as his representatives. Today, because there were no Kohanim who were in a state of ritual purity, the piece of dough that he takes may not be used for any purpose and is burnt. How big does the dough have to be? So in order to take challah, the dough has to be at least a kilo. A kilo is 2.2 pounds. If you have a dough that's large, now, how large large is, various authorities have different views. For Sephardim, it would be a kilo and 600 gram. For Ashkenazim, it would be two and a quarter kilo. Then, in a, before taking off the piece, you would say a blessing. Baruch atah Hashem, Elokeinu melech olam, asher kedishana b'mitzvotah v'tzivanu lafrish chala, and some would add, min ha'isa. So this is the act. So again, you make the dough, take off the challah, wrap it, okay, and burn it. You may burn it on top of the stove, wrapped in aluminum foil. You may double wrap it and dispose it in the, in, of it in the garbage, so it'll be burnt when the garbage is burnt. Or you may double wrap it and put it in the oven and burn it in the oven, but nothing else may be in the oven while it's being burnt. So that's the mitzvah. The mitzvah is taking something off and consecrating it. What's the mitzvah of maser, tithing, that we just referred to? When a person owns a field, he would have to cultivate the field, take in the crops, and then instead of selling it or using it for his own benefit, he would have to give up specific amounts for different groups of people. So the word maser comes from the word eser, which means ten. He would have to give a tenth to the Levium, who in earlier times served as the rabbis, teachers, social workers of the Jewish people. That's what Maser means. There were further gifts. There was Truma, which means uplifting, which was a gift that was given to the Kohen even before the Maser. Okay, there was Maser Sheni. After the Maser was given, the Truma was given, the Maser was given, so now what does he have? He has under 90% of his crop. A second tithing would be done. So what happened to the second tithing? The first year of the Shemitah cycle, and in the second year of the Shemitah cycle, he would use this, the amount of money he can get for this tithing, plus a fifth, or the crops themselves, to go to Yerushalayim and to spend time near the Mikdash with the Kohanim, have a sort of spiritual vacation. In the third year, instead of doing this, he would dedicate this to the poor. This is besides the obligation of tzedakah. In the fourth year, in the fifth year, we're back to the spiritual vacation. In the sixth year, 
we're back to giving it to the poor. And again, this is in addition to tzedakah. And the seventh year of Shemitah, where there's a total cessation of work. So when you go back to Chala and compare it to Masa, which is what our author is doing, they're both acts of dedication. So what the woman is doing in, in her home is parallel to what her husband would, would be doing in his outside endeavors in the fields. So he says the effect of both Maser and taking Chala is to strengthen your emuna. What's emuna? We use this word so randomly and so frequently. Emuna means faith. But what's faith? Is it just wanting things to be the way you want them to be? No. Emuna means believing every